Good morning, dear students. Welcome to the Institute for Open Learning for the Advanced Certificate in Secondary Education for students studying business studies. I am your tutor, Mr. Simwanza. I can be reached at the following contact number 081 triple four zero three three nine our class for today will be examination based for 2019 the class content for today will include the important topics for the examination preparation it will also summarize the three examinations, that is May, August, and November examination for 2019. This class will serve as an examination guide in terms of preparation and writing. The class also will not serve a purpose or is not there as a scope. The class will not serve as a scope for the said examination, but is only there to guide students towards the preparation and the writing of such an examination. The topics of discussion of the class will include the following. We'll start with the aspect of business terms, where students are advised to understand the business terminologies used in the business activities, which are very important for your better understanding of this subject. Examples of business stems important for this class may include or includes economics as the way of satisfying, satisfying the basic needs, resources, which are things that are used in the production, production it itself, specialization, division of labor, branding, stakeholders, private and public enterprises. Those are few terms for this sake, but you are advised to read more and understand all the business terminologies because you may be asked to define, you may be asked to differentiate, you may be asked to explain any of the business terminologies. What is the importance of studying this subject, business studies? As a business stakeholder, one may ask you, what is the importance of studying business studies? This subject helps you to guide you in terms of career, it helps you to understand the business activities. It also encourages business initiatives. It helps you to have a knowledge and understanding on how to become an entrepreneur. A shot on the importance of studying this subject. Let's look at the factors of production that are used in producing the products that are put for sale in the business activities. We are talking about the land, labor, capital, and entrepreneur. Read and understand what it means. Let's quickly look at the global trading in business activities. We are talking about the international exchange of goods and services between nations or countries in this case. 
we have an organization that regulates such activities, which is abbreviated, abbreviated in WTO. You may be asked to explain the abbreviation. You may be asked to look at the role of such an organization, which is to ensure the fairness, the freedom, and the smooth in such exchange of goods and services. Such an organization deals with the global rules of trade. It looks at regula regulating such activities, correct, monitor, and ensure that all participants in such trading are safe and secured, protected from all the illegal trades, all activities in this case. You have to also look at the Let's leave the aspect of the economy that you see there as the planned, the mixed economy. Let's first tackle the, the multinational companies that are found in this global trading. What do multinational companies then mean? We are talking of the business or organization that are operating internationally. Look at the advantages and the disadvantages of such organization and the countries included in such trades. The hosting countries, which is referred as to a, the country that invites the investors from outside. And such invitation would then be referred as to the inward investment. Read and understand in simple terms what inward investment means in this cycle. Let's now look at the economic system. We are talking of the country or the state approach in managing its activities, whereas there is an approach that is referred as to the market economy, which is an economy that is more on or privately owned, where it is more focused on making profit. We have the planned economy. This is where the state is in control and is not profit driven. Other economies use the mixed economy that is using both the planned and the market economy. Look at the advantage and disadvantages of such economies in your country. A question may be asked to state the economies that may be found in any state, to state and explain, to differentiate such economies. You may be asked to discuss which economy would you prefer for your country. But take note, any economy is best. So it is just for you to motivate why you say such an approach is best. Read broader and understand. Let's look at the role now of the state in such any chosen economy that we have just discussed now. Examples of the role of such a state may include to protect the citizens from any threat, to maintain law and order. This is where police officers come in. This is where the National Defense Force comes in. And this is done through policies and regulations, the constitution of the country. The other role to provide goods and services in the society, public goods and services, schools, roads, infrastructures, a few to mention. The government has the role to protect the natural resources, the trees, our animals, our water, 
and the land. In generally, the state has the overall role to manage the economy. This includes any activity in the economy. It must also encourage competition in terms of businesses to accommodate the upcoming entrepreneurs in the business activities. It also has to regulate the level of the economic activities. This is through the government spending and taxation. Let's look at the wealthy and distribution or income distribution in this case, where we talk about the government intervention in terms of alleviating and reducing employment, alleviating poverty and reduce unemployment. The government can use the intervention approach to sponsor the job creation schemes, use the monetary and the physical policy, encourage active labor, labor market policies, encourage the labor market participation, provide education and training. This is through education and training policies. The land reform policies. This is to regulate the distribution of land in the economy. It can also use the intervention of social grants and housing assistance to ensure satisfaction of the basic needs. Let's look at the aspect of the finance. Every business, every individual needs money to survive in any activity that one intends to do, which is therefore important also for the business operation. There are terms there is a term referred as to the five C's in this relation, where such five C's are the factors that the bank or any organization that tries to assist any business in providing finance that it looks at before approving such an application. And such five C's are referred as to the capital capacity, collateral, character, and condition. Read and understand what it means. Profit and loss account and the balance sheet. What do we mean in business terms or in the business activity in this case? A profit and loss account simply means a business account that shows the financial performance of an organization over a certain period. It shows the profit and the loss aspect in this case, where such an account will show the gross profit of, of an organization, which is the sales and the cost of sales. The net profit, what do you get after? you have subtracted all the expenses of the business operations. Take note, a question may come in any form. You may be given figures in a case scenario to calculate the profit of, the gross profit of an, of an organization, to calculate the net profit of such an account. You may be given figures and under other terms and there will be missing words that you may be required to fill in. You may be asked to show the formula to calculate any ratio in this case. Let's look at the balance sheet. What is it? What does it mean in the business terms? It's simply shows the value of the business on a particular date. We are talking about the business assets and its liability. 
Take note, a question may come still, just like in the profit and the loss account, to calculate the asset and the liabilities to show its formulas in calculating such. Let's look at the leadership and management of a business. Who are the leaders? Who are the managers of an organization? There is a difference between such terms. Read and understand. But in simple terms, leadership is a process of setting the organizational vision influence people to achieve such a, a, the vision. And management is all about planning, organizing, leading and commanding the business activities. People who are assigned to manage a business have specific and certain functions. That includes the planning, organizing, controlling, and directing the business activities. But any organization has the requirements of an ideal manager, a good manager that will take an organization to its vision or goals. Such qualities includes a person who is having skills in communication, not to mislead, not to give false information. A person who is self-confident, who does not need to be motivated by external factors, but have confidence in himself. The one who can resolve problems in an organization the one who can present organizational information perfectly and effectively. Read and understand more on the qualities required of a good manager. Read and understand the types of leadership that one may get in an organization, and it includes the autocratic, the democratic, Let's if a servant, any type of leadership, look at the advantage and disadvantages of such leadership in an organization. In short, about management and leading an organization. Now, when you are leading or managing an organization, where do you sell your products? How do you ensure that your product is known to the customers? We are referring to the market. We are referring as to the marketing, the way information is disseminated from the organization to the intended customers. But then, there is a smart approach in setting and managing the business or the marketing objectives in this case. We are looking at the marketing objective have to be specific. It has to be measurable. We are talking of quantity. Such an objective must be attainable, not something that is impossible. You must be realistic on this one. And it must be time specific. When do you want to achieve such? Let's look at problems, conflict, and work participation in the business. Conflict simply means the misunderstanding between one or two people. This may be home, this may be at work, but in this case, we are talking about in business terms. Look at what causes such conflict. Look at the conflict resolution. How are you going to achieve or to solve such problems? There are steps that must be followed. There are also a approaches or methods 
methods that are used to resolve such problems. There is an organization or organizations that are there to represent the parties in this case. We are talking about the employer and the employee. There is an organization that represents the employees and is referred as to the trade union. There is an organization that represents the employer, which is referred as to the employer organization. Look at the purpose of a trade union. Look at why employees join trade unions. Look at the trade unions that one can find in our country. Nantu, the Nanu, a few to mention. Read and understand. What does participation means then in this case? This is simply a business activity, a management approach that actually gives an opportunity for employees to actively participate in the business activities or in the business decision. And such an approach has the advantages and even the disadvantages. But let's look at the advantages in this case. What is it that the organization or employees then benefit from such an approach? That, and that approach brings about greater productivity. Our production will increase. There will be a good relation between the employees. Employees will be motivated when are involved in such activities better decisions will be made in an organization when employees are involved and the communication between the management and the employees will then improve and of course our goals will be effectively and efficiently obtained teamwork of course will be improved we are looking at employees will be motivated by feeling that they are indeed valued by the management or the, uh, the organization in this case. Let's look at the entrepreneur. A person who initiates, who has the ability to start an organization, who has the ability to to turn the factors of production, land, labor, a few to mention, into useful things, into producing a product. Such a person has the characteristics for one to be successful. Such a person is referred as to a person who is self-disciplined, confident, who is open-minded, who is there to take risks, a self-starter, the one who takes all the responsibilities on himself, the one who is not afraid of competition, the one who is creative and determined to achieve and end what he started, the one who has the ability to manage people. That is in short about who the entrepreneur is or a successful entrepreneur in the business activities. Now, such an entrepreneur, when you intend to open a business, there is a product in mind that one needs to offer for sale. But then there are lots of products in the market that one needs to choose from. We talk about um, products like manufacturer products, customer products, a few to mention that one needs to choose from depending on the nature of the business that such an entrepreneur in, intends 
to start. Such products needs to be identified, distinguished from other products in the market. That is referred as to the packaging. Entrepreneurs are encouraged to understand such types of packaging, the types of products that one may get in the market. Now, that product that one intends to bring in the market, all the already existing in the market, all business stakeholders need to understand that a product on the market has a lifespan or there is a cycle in its life. And such cycle includes the first stage that is the development of a product when it's designed, the planning of designing such a product, the quality that one needs to see in it. Then such a product is introduced in the market for the first time. That is the introduction stage of its life. Then, when such a product gains demand, people start buying it more and more. It is referred as to the growth stage of such a product. Until such a time that that product reaches at a stage where the demand does not increase anymore and it does not reduce. It is referred as the product have reached its maturity. Then from that stage, the demand starts to decline. To decline. This may be due to different factors that other new innovative products have come in the market and the competition becomes tough. Then such a product starts to lose demands. Then now such an entrepreneur goes back on the table, work out what to do. Is it to reintroduce such a product again in the market or to come up with a new product? That is in short about the product life cycle. There are other topics that you are advised to read on that we are not going to discuss for now. Look at the organizational structure. Organizations have different structures. Look at the needs of a human being. Look at segmentation in the business activity of your product. You are also advised to look at the qualities needed for a good customer service. Please take note for entrepreneurs. Look at communication. This is a very important aspect in any relationship. At work, at home, or anywhere where you might find yourself. But it has the challenges that one will face. And it also has approaches on how you may overcome or resolve such challenges in terms of communication. My dear students, those are a few of important topics that you are advised to take note in this case. Let's look at the part of the examination and writing guide of our class for today. Preparation. You are socially advised to always pray during your preparations. And take note that all the questions that you may find in your examination are from the content of your study guide provided by this institute, the Institute for Open Learning in this case. You are not limited to the said study guide only, but you can also still consult other sources. Make sure you understand the unit outcomes at the end of each unit. Please make sure you get information about the venue and the time in advance before your examination. 
do not forget to carry enough materials necessary for that examination and this may include things such as a pen, watch, ruler, calculator, student card and any other material that you may be required in that case. During the examination, you are still advised on a social basis, my students, to first pray before you start writing. This is only for those that believe in God. As said on a social basis, please make sure you first read the questions and instructions carefully to avoid disqualification or losing of marks. Students are not allowed to take any form of notes into the examination. Otherwise, when found to contravene such an instruction, you may be disqualified from the examination. Please consider the marks allocated at the end of each question as it guides you on the required content that one needs for such marks. This is to avoid losing of marks. Make sure you understand the verbs used in a question. Verbs are provided in your study guides. They are discussed clearly. Please read and understand. Examples of the verbs used always in question includes discuss, briefly outline, differentiate, list, compare. But these are a few to mention. Let's look at, for example, when a question requires you to discuss. It's simply requiring you to point out the positive and the negative futures and arrive at the conclusion at the end. When you are asked to briefly outline, you are simply required to explain in short. When you are asked to differentiate, please point out only the differences between such terms. When you are asked to list or state, please only present a list of such required names. A question may require you to compare the terms public and private enterprise. You are required to look at the differences and the similarities of such terms. That is in short about the verbs. Read and understand. This will help you to gain the marks required. My dear students, that is a summary of our today's lesson for today. And I repeat, it's not a scope, but it is only a guide towards your examination. My dear students, I wish you good luck.